And the last part, part five of, of chapter five, starting on page 145 with questions in the classroom, obviously we know that part of the job of a teacher is asking a lot of questions. I've, uh, one thing that's worth mentioning is teachers tend to a lot of times ask the same students questions and sometimes we'll overlook certain students who are quiet or off to the side or something so there's ways to make sure well you can just go down the roster asking questions just to make sure that you know everyone gets a question in the class or you can put the students names like on a card or a, like a tongue depressor those wooden tongue depressor sticks and uh, I've seen teachers do that where they have like a cup of tongue depressor of names and then as they ask questions well they just pull a name out of the cup just to make sure like everyone gets a question which is not a bad idea and again like we said before a lot of times ESL classes will be teacher asking a lot of questions to you know around the room just like drilling students keeping them awake keeping them on the edge of their seat it's like they never know when their turn will come they'll have to answer usually it's a grammar question or something it could be any type question and <clears throat> again uh, that just engages the students and it lets us know too how, how their skill is we talked earlier that we want to have more genuine questions of students instead of just the token sort of display questions uh, that have very limited answers <clears throat> And um, the term scaffolding, scaffolding is popular in terms of mm, uh, kind of asking simpler questions, building up, leading up to more complex questions, so the student's not overwhelmed. And we refer to that as like scaffolding questions, which, uh, like the scaffolding on a building, it kind of um, helps people stand, like the ladders, you might say. And then there's open-ended and closed-ended questions. So the open-ended questions, uh, there's no right answer, there's not one correct answer, and the closed-end question, there's one specific answer for that question. So we like to use open-ended questions just to get like more discussion. Now, wait time uh, is can be important. I think especially with my experience with like Japanese students, when you ask them a question, they need a second to like think, a few seconds to think about it before they answer. And as Americans, we tend to ask a question, and then if we don't like that awkward silence, so we tend to, you know, move to someone else, or repeat the question over and over again, or paraphrase the question. And I think it is worth noting to have a to be patient with some of that wait time uh, as some students need that to formulate their answer whereas yeah like maybe in an American classroom if a student hesitates for three four seconds usually we feel like they don't know the answer and they, the student probably wants us to move on to someone else but not with some other other cultures and <clears throat> And then uh, finally, the ethnog ethnography, which we mentioned uh, earlier in the chapter, which is the idea of uh, observing a classroom, a classroom culture, you might say, with a real uh, open-mindedness. And I think that includes when you go to other countries, if you ever observe classes, uh, to be open-minded like their, their teaching staff. And, uh, for example... In a lot of cultures, students are silent in class, and that's of a, like, to show respect for the teacher. They almost feel like it would be disrespectful to, to um, ask a question or interrupt a teacher, you might say. So I think a lot of the ethnography uh, discussion is mostly about the kind of cu cultures in the classroom. And of course, we have students you know, from all over the world in our classroom, so their culture, the culture of their classroom often will be different. In addition to that, uh, in America, the ESL students, like in the K-12 through system, they tend to have a stigma when they first come. They're this ESL student, and they don't like that stigma, and they're anxious to move into like the mainstream class. 
So it can be kind of hard, you know, you're a minority of sorts and uh, and people feel like, you know, you're lower level and it's just going to be kind of hard all around. Of course, hopefully they'll only be like ESL for one year or maybe a little longer than that. Uh, okay, so that's the end of chapter five and uh, hopefully you've gotten a lot of good ideas from this chapter. See you in chapter six.